Tonight is only one verse. So cool. <laughs> We're gonna read one verse together, but so we're in, <laughs> okay, this isn't funny. <laughs> I'm laughing still. We have a single verse to read tonight, but you know, it's good stuff because it means everything. Does that sound dramatic? Yes, but, but, but still accurate. You know what I mean? So this is when uh, Joseph, he is in Harmony, Pennsylvania. And he's translating with Oliver and they write about baptism with the Nephites and they're like, er, what does that mean? How do we do that? What's that all about? <laughs> so what did they do with their question? Well, they prayed about it. And who did appear to them but the John the Baptist, the John. Now, John could be arguably the first testimony of Jesus from someone else because he is the one that leaped in the womb when he was around Jesus. And that could arguably be the first testimony of like, I know who this is. Um, <laughs> you like that? That was my John the Baptist, John, John the Baptist in the womb. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyways, he's a big deal. He was, his whole existence was to prepare the way of the Lord. And so he actually, um, well, he was baptizing people before Jesus came. And he was baptizing people after Jesus came. And he did, in fact, baptize Jesus. Um, and then he was killed. Then he shows up. To, to Joseph. Now, who's Joseph? At the time, you know, Joseph probably still thinks he's like, who am I? I often wonder that all the time. Well, who am I? You know what I mean? And I'm no Joseph Smith. But in high, in, in the time, people are probably like, well, who's Joseph Smith? You know what I mean? So random. Um, in, in Harmony, Pennsylvania. I have been to Harmony, Pennsylvania. There is nothing noteworthy out there there it's like another small village town with like one there's not much happening so we're having the ironic priesthood come and be brought to the earth and what happens when we have that well we can baptize and we can have the sacrament now if we think of baptism this doesn't exist right now no one can do it, which means you, okay, anyways, <laughs> what am I saying, where am I, okay, John the Baptism, Some... why do I keep saying John the Baptism, <laughs> you guys, if you need to know what John the Baptist did, well, John the Baptism is a really good nickname, John the Baptism brought the Aaronic Priesthood to Joseph, to Oliver, they were kind of like Joe Schmo people at the time in a Joe Schmo place. So I'm just trying to tell you that great things can happen no matter who or where you are. If we inquire of the Lord. Okay. So our one verse is Doctrine and Covenants 13. Upon my fellow servants in the name of Messiah. I confer. So he's doing it in the name of Christ. I confer the priesthood of Aaron, which holds the keys of the ministering of angels and of the gospel of repentance and of baptism by immersion for the remission of sins. And this shall never be taken again from the earth until the sons of Levi do offer again an offering unto the Lord in righteousness. Boom, bang, we're done. But guess what that means? It literally means everything. So when we're learning and he's learning about a certain way of living and this gospel and, and to do things in a certain way for like this higher glory, really. Um, and, and you're just kind of stuck because you're like, well, what does that mean? I can't do anything. Well, now we can. You know what I mean? So 
the fact that they can start baptizing people now, it means everything. It means everything for the growth of the church. It means everything to your entire existence. Your whole soul can now be, you know what I mean? You can be forgiven. You can be refreshed. You can be revived. The fact that every Sunday, because of the ironic priesthood, it's like we're walking back to the water. Anyways, it's... If you just think about one thing, think about what wouldn't you have if you were not baptized? What would life be like if we could not be forgiven every single week? If we could, if we could not change, if we could not receive added strength, if we could not make covenants, what would life be like here? What would your soul be like hereafter? I don't know. So when I say that one verse meant everything, it's because that what happened literally means everything and affects everything. Not to be dramatic, but it is. That's it. That's all I have for you. That's it. Sorry, guys. I hurt my back. I'm going to go foam roll. Do you guys foam roll? <laughs> my muscles need it. Okay, that's it. <laughs>